golfing world recently travelled to Rochdale Golf Club in the northwest of England to meet the man known as the Singing Caddy. Over a career that spanned three decades, Paul Stevens worked the bag of some legendary golfers, including Nick Faldo, Greg Norman and Tom Watson. The Englishman's real passion, though, has always been music. We spoke to Paul about his storied career in the game and his current life as an after-dinner speaker and entertainer. I came from a, a poor working-class uh, background in Rochdale, and uh, my mother worked in the cotton industry and was involved in a, a quite a bad arm accident, which were very prevalent at the time. Health and safety wasn't to the fore. She was a single parent uh, family, you know, and uh, to stop her from having to skimp and give me pocket money, I came and caddied here for four shillings a round. That's where I had my formative years in caddying. It's all about common sense. The, um, the modern day caddies will try and convince you that it's more than it's rocket science, but it's not. Because, I mean, they get everything found for them these days. In the old days, it was it was just common sense, saying the right thing at the right time. Found I had an aptitude for it, and uh, I got on famous with the, the guys that I carry for, and they used to ask for me by name. We didn't use yardages. Uh, we used our eyes, eyeballing. We listened to the wind, and you could sniff the coldness of the wind if the ball was traveling. And to me, that was proper caddying. Uh, that, that, was, that was the genuine art of caddying. At that time, I'd, I had no inkling that it was going to be a career for me. It was a, just a part-time uh, pocket money-making uh, experience for me. I'd always been a singer. I was a head boy in a choir. I was the lead boy. I used to sing all the arias. And I actually started as a rock and roll singer. I, I won a talent quest at Butlins. Uh, Ringo Starr played drums for me. I finished up um, forming my own group and supported the Beatles at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, and Ringo was, was with the Beatles then, two years after he'd played for me. So that was my, my career, and it was only until I was involved in a, a bad car accident, I decided that I had to do something, otherwise I would stagnate. I had to do my own rehab, my own physio, but I thought the best thing for me to do is get an outside job, and so go back to caddying. I was working in South Wales and my friend who I was staying with uh, had started caddying and he, uh, he took me along to a golf tournament and there was a shortage of caddies. So one of the guys, I'll never forget, he was a nice guy called David Jones from Shandon Park in Belfast, thought that I was a caddy and he said, are you working? I said, oh no. And, and he looked disappointed and I say, are you, do you need a caddy? He said, yeah, there's a short. I said, I haven't done it for a while, but I'll caddy for you. He said, would you? I said, absolutely. After about nine holes, he said, how long did you say it was since you caddied? I said, oh, about 20 years. He said, that's amazing. He said, you've got more idea than a lot of the people that are out here. It would prove enough encouragement for Paul to make a return to caddying, traveling the continent on the backs of some of the greatest golfers of the time. to be the best caddy in the world. I had ambition, I had belief, but I realized that um, to be the best caddy, I would need to, to be a Lynx caddy. So I moved to Southport, uh, the golfing coast, the golf coast, surrounded by all those wonderful courses, Hillside, Southport and Ainsdale, West Langs, and the Jewel in the Crown, Royal Buckdale. I made friends with a lot of the Southport caddies. Two of them were very dear friends of mine. They've passed away now, Bobby Lee, who caddied for Peter Thompson, and Ted Halsall, who carried for Johnny Miller. And they both won round Royal Birkdale for those players. What? <laughs> well, well, what an incredible Eagle Three for Miller. And they were sort of mentors, and I went out with them a lot and gleaned a lot of information from them and worked hard on my Lynx caddy and had a lot of good finishes in Lynx tournaments. After just a year on the circuit, Paul found himself on the bag of Peter Oosterhaus at the Open. Perfect judgment of distance, just a little bit wide. Peter was the top player in, in Europe at that time. He'd won the Order of Merit the year before, and uh, even though we were, we were behind, there's always a chance that um, anything can happen on the last day, and it, it almost did, because 
uh, Gary lost the ball on 17 and uh, you know was very fortunate to to find it um, that could have it could have gone a different way but he prevailed and we finished runner-up and that was a big moment I had another second later on with Mark McNulty who I was with for seven years we finished uh, second to Faldo at St Andrews in 1990 and that's a great shot that's one of the toughest spin positions I think it's the toughest spin position we've had here all week just over the lip of the Valley of Sin got it good got it well and that putt would give him a 64. Matt was leading the order of merit that year and had finished second in the Scottish Open at Glen Eagles and, and was highly regarded and uh, the first round he, he shot 74 and he actually knocked it out of bounds on, on the par five which, which is incredible for Mark and it was a bad score and I'd, I'd give, a, give him as a tip to a lot of players said you know put some money on Mark this week but he came back so strong after that and he, he shot a fantastic last round. Out we go to the 10th to Mark McNulty. Nine under, out in 33. Oh, and another one. Mark goes to 10 under. Although I didn't achieve my, my aim to be the best caddy in the world and win a, a major, and, and the Open in particular, I gave it my best shot. And, two seconds and a lot of other tournament wins. Paul found himself caddying for some of the greats of the game, including many of his golfing heroes and some of the sport's future stars. I'd always, um, I'd always kept my singing going. Uh, e even though caddying was a, a full-time occupation for me, I'd still, uh, I'd still did my singing. Since I've retired, you know, when I sadly had to pack in because of my injury, I still continue my singing and, and then got into after dinner speaking, which is my main uh, vocation now. And uh, I, I really enjoy that part of my life. It keeps me in touch with the game. I can still talk about my experiences, the players, the, the occasions that have happened, um, anecdotal uh, experiences and uh, it's, um, it's going very well and uh, it's very therapeutic for me because it keeps me in touch with the, the sport that I love, which was a, a big part of my life. 